Thanks very much. Thank you. 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 Thank um, uh, did you have any reservations for coming down at all? Was it difficult to win the, uh, the, the big six of the city lights? Uh, had no reservations, but it was uh, took a long time coming down. I sort of uh, typical uh, country boy from Benio didn't want to leave here to go, so I uh, didn't come down and play my first game until I was 24, I think. Thought I'd uh, do something with my life and get it on track because I was just uh, stagnating in Benio and the opportunity came to uh, come down and have a go at Carl. And uh, came down in 79, couldn't get a game, get a big back bloke in the back pocket of this one. And uh, so I said to the wife, look, uh, we'll go and live down here for 12 months, if we don't make it, we'll go back to India, but uh, luckily things worked out. Chris, 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 um, yeah, look, it was a great time for us, uh, and to go through to play league football is great. And to be able to go through and say you won a premiership is fantastic, but it's just magnificent to say you played against Collingwood and beat them in the ground. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, um, 1987 was a year um, that was, I guess, memorable to you for vastly different reasons for the team. Of course, um, it was a premiership year and um, it was a grand final victory that was dedicated to yourself, Peter Motley and Bernie Evans. Um, for the people that perhaps don't know or don't realise what we went through, can you tell us a little bit about that battle through that particular year? Yeah. In uh, 1980, actually, that's another claim to fame. I've got uh, the 1986 Grand Final was my last ever game, and it was the last game that Bruce Dewar played for Carlton. So, uh, oh, go down to the ranks and play my last game together. But uh, I got all keyed up for the pre season of 87. 87 was going to be my last year. I got turning 31. It was a dangerous age for Carlton in those times. And uh, we got to January of the pre season, and I just didn't start to feel real flash. And I just stopped training and uh, had to go and see all these doctors and stuff and uh, finally uh, we diagnosed I had cancer. So tonight's a pretty special night to me because uh, I had a different cancer Dr. Farmer had. Uh, it was uh, pretty horrendous and had to go through about 18 months of chemotherapy. And um, the good thing was that uh, I came through at the end, Peter Motley came through at the end, Bernie Evans is still here with us, so it was just a good thing that uh, Cancer just doesn't, you know, people must uh, not take any silly chances because it doesn't discriminate against anyone. You can be a prime sportsman, you can be a bloke living on the corner down the street, cancer attacks anyone. So if you have any symptoms or whatever and you don't feel flash, get along with the bloody doctor for Christ's sake. Uh, just one story about the farmer. <laughs> when, he, uh, when he came over, he used to love nothing better than the Sunday afternoon sit. So he'd bring up all the boys and after training we'd all have to go around to the farmer's place in the place of the park. And it was a typical, order, huh? typical Melbourne cold, wintry Sunday, Bang. freezing cold. So we're in the garage at the farmer's joint, he says, shit, it's cold, isn't it? He said, right, we'll light a fire. <laughs> so we've got a big fire going in the garage and it's a concrete floor and we're all drunk as scums. And the fire got so all of a sudden the concrete just exploded. <laughs> In that uh, great win that was um, achieved for a lot of reasons, not least of which was um, was this and, and uh, Peter Mocker. Uh, welcome, Richard, to the microphone, please. Richard, uh, you, you came across in the list, and I guess uh, you look back now and do um, so you still pinch your cheeks with the way it did pan out through that year of 1987? 
this. I mean, like I sort of got picked up just before the draft started, so at the end of '86, and uh, and we were a lot of off the guys. We wanted to go play it over the east if we can, if, if we were good enough. And I was fortunate enough to be picked up just before the draft ended. And um, Carlton, sort of, as it turns out, I was actually in America traveling around with a few mates, and I got a phone call from um, Ian Collins uh, from Carlton in America, and I was very fortunate that I was same with a mate of mine who I rang my mum the day before to say, Yes, mum, I'm here in America, I'm still alive, having fun, blah, blah, blah. And then next day I got home quite drunk and uh, got a phone message from Ian Collins, who was the CEO of Carlton at the time. And he, so I rang him back, straight away opened the camera, tried to save myself up. Rang him up and said, uh, We want to sign you up. Shit, you're not expecting that. So, it was a big surprise. Anyway, I spent the next two weeks in America drinking piss and having a good time. <laughs> when I got home, I started to train, and um, uh, it, it was it was an unbelievable experience for myself being at a club like Carlton, first year premiership. You know, as I say to live right now, it's you bloody lucky to play in premiership. A lot of these guys here played in two or three, which is extremely lucky. Yes, you got to be good. But you've got to be lucky in the right spot at the right time. And there's a hell of a lot that goes in the place to win those sorts of things. You're lucky you're playing Collingwood. Oh, shit. Yeah, so 87 was a great year. We were fortunate enough to win. And he was there. And it was a good time. That, it, that was a period of time, I think, in which the uh, captaincy was um, handed over to Stephen Kernahan, which was a, a fairly audacious move that the guy, I think it was only 22, 23 at the time, being a car of the year. You know, what impact do you feel that uh, Kernahan had on that team, um, long serving captain in world history? Um, right, he was 22, I was 21, so I was younger than him, of course, I looked up to him and his mother. He was the only guy to keep my mother up until the late nineties. <laughs> but uh, look, look, people often ask me what was Kearney and like. It's hard to explain. He was a bloody good bloke and a bloody good footballer. But you would back him all the way. You know, um, if you're in a war, or whatever, you'd, you'd stand by him all the way because you know he would look after you. Um, fortunately, eighty-seven. It wasn't a very good kick. The Carlton supporters here, you might know. Uh, 87, we played North Melbourne at the last game of the year at Bentall Park. We had to win it to end up on top. If we didn't win it, we would have, or Hawthorne would have been top, we would have been come second and, and played the next, next week. So winning gives us a week off. He took a mark in the pocket, and we've all, I don't know, Kenny, I don't know what you remember, but I was thinking, shit. He kicked his helicopter off his boot and it went straight. It went straight to the goal and we fortunately won by four points, got the week off and then you know, things went on from there. And, you know, having that week off after a very long year was very important. So uh, he got us into the grand final, which we well, went to the finals, which I suppose indicates what the bloke's like. When, the, when it needs to be done, he'll do it. And he did it then, and, and we got grand final. And just the final one for you, Richard. Then, you know, you're only here for, I guess, a, a very short period of time in the playing career. You went to North, and that uh, was fairly brief. Also, injury perhaps took its toll on you. And yet, for all these years on, you still had this uh, really healthy connection with Carlton. You do a lot of the spirit of Carlton just in Australia. Why, why is that? What's what's the connection with the club that endures? What does it endure? Well, a great club, but uh, I think Bobby now got me at a weak moment when I was drunk, and he asked me if I could help out. So yes, I will, and he hasn't let me forget that. Uh, look, a good club, uh, great history. Uh, in, in Perth, I'm not sure what it's like Cookery, but in Perth, there's a lot of Carlton supporters, um, a lot of respect for the club. Unlike Collingwood, which you either support them or you hate them, there's a lot of people out there who respect Carlton. Uh, uh, so, uh, look, good history, hopefully, maybe in the next three or four years, maybe, 
we might be winning another premiership, but we'll wait and see. In the words of Jay, thanks, thanks very much. Thanks. Thanks.